Hey everybody, how's it going? Got a lot of requests for this one. My guide to buying and selling used gear online. The internet is a great resource for finding used gear. However, it's also populated by lowlifes and scumbags who will take advantage of your good nature and rip you off. I'm gonna break this down into 10 easy to understand points so that even the bass players can understand what to look out for because believe it or not, there are people too. <sighs> I feel so dirty for saying that. If it's too good to be true, it is. Oh man, where do I get started with this one? I've come across several of these scams over the years. Before I started out doing YouTube, I wanted to direct music videos and was really interested in getting my hands on a used Sony F35 movie camera. I found one on eBay for an incredible price that was several thousand dollars lower than competing ads. So I placed an offer and I got an email from the seller stating, oh, well, you can pay me directly and we can bypass all the fees, which immediately set off the alarm bells. Here's the thing. If you're gonna pay thousands of dollars for something, stay on legit sites like eBay and Amazon for buyer protection. If some shithead wants you to go outside established channels to avoid fees, tell him to go fuck himself. He's trying to scam you. So I wrote him back and said, hey, you know, you're not that far. I can fly into your town next week and pick it up from you in person and then pay you. Oh, well, you know, I'm not gonna be in the office next week. That's because you don't have an office or a camera or any shred of morality. Please do the rest of humanity a favor and light yourself on fire, asswipe. I ran into another scam about two years ago. Some joker wrote me and offered to donate about 15 high-end tube amps to the show if only I'd send him the shipping fees. Bear in mind, he did not send any pictures or videos of this amazing amp collection. Only that he was located in Florida and that he would like to see them on the show. Once again, I write back, hey, why don't I fly down there? I can rent a U-Haul and drive them back to Canada myself. We can make an awesome video about it too. What man, you don't trust me? I'm just gonna send those amps to another YouTuber. Yeah, well that happened, didn't it? Once again, I highly doubt that this magically awesome amp collection even existed. And you can bet those shipping fees would have went directly into his pocket and I would have never heard from him again. The point is, when you're dealing online, if something seems out of place or is just simply too amazing to believe, don't believe it! The easiest way to call people out on their bullshit is to offer to meet them in person. They don't know what your income is or if you can actually afford a plane ticket or not. What they really don't want, though, is to risk exposure, especially when everyone has video cameras these days. And they will scurry away like the cockroaches they are when asked for a face-to-face meetup. Meet in a public place. If you do manage to arrange a private sale over Craigslist or something like that, meet in a publicly accessible space like a Starbucks. You can have coffee, do exchange, and everyone's happy. The added bonus is because it's a public space, there are witnesses and better yet, security cameras. The chances of you being ripped off plummet when you do business in a public space and everything's being recorded. And if you do get ripped off, there's evidence. If they don't take credit cards or PayPal, it's a scam. Western Union, the internet thief's preferred method of stealing from you. I'm gonna quote the CBC here from April 27, 2018. Western Union has admitted to aiding and abetting wire fraud and it has agreed to pay $586 million to victims. Meaning an awful lot of people got fucked over using Western Union. Just Google Western Union scam and check out a few articles. If you're buying online, use your credit card or use PayPal because they have fraud protection. Western Union might be implementing changes now, but why take chances with your money? Using PayPal, proceed with caution. Never pay via friends and family for an item because you've got no recourse if you get screwed. Let's say you send some cunt slime a few thousand dollars for an awesome guitar amp. And he says you have to send friends and family because he doesn't want to pay the PayPal fees on such a large sum. So, like an idiot, you agree, and he mails you a box of sand. Guess what? You're out of luck. 
Payments sent through the friends and family program are not eligible for buyer protection. Don't be a dumbass. Don't fall for the friends and family scam. If the seller doesn't want to pay the fees, tell them to go get fucked. Check the return policy of the seller. Ask yourself if you're comfortable with an all sales final policy before buying something. If you buy an item and don't like it, the seller may not take returns and you might be stuck with something you don't want. You can always resell it yourself, but make sure you know what you're getting yourself into before hitting that purchase button. eBay rating lower than 99.5%? Don't bother. I learned this one from the Ken Rockwell blog when it comes to buying used gear on eBay. A 99.5% rating should be the absolute rock bottom rating of any seller you deal with. Most eBay reviews are filled with positive stuff, so they all seem a little artificially high. But even a few bad reviews should be a warning. And a bunch of bad reviews means something is definitely wrong there. Always read the bad reviews first. This applies equally to eBay and Amazon. Read what people are complaining about. It should be pretty easy to tell if the seller is legit, up to no good, or if the base player somehow got hold of her credit card again and are blaming the seller for their own stupidity. Avoid brokerage fees. This one's for everyone in the world who buys something from the United States. If you're shipping from the States, do not use couriers, or at the very least, avoid the ground shipping or cheapest option. Why? Because you will get a gigantic customs brokerage fee slapped onto your item. This was a huge problem for people buying small ticket items like shirts from the States and then sending them into Canada. Spend 10 bucks on a shirt and get a $30 brokerage fee. No, I'm not making that up. I had to drop an extra $400 to get my Great River preamp into the country back in 2003. Yeah, thanks UPS. Usually I like a kiss before I get fucked. So what can you do? Either use overnight shipping or next day shipping if you're to use a courier because they include the brokerage fees with those options. Either way, they're gonna get your money. Oddly enough, it costs less to use the more expensive service once you calculate the all-in cost, which makes about as much sense as the Fahrenheit scale. Or you can do what I do and ship via the United States Postal Service. It has reasonable charges and will hand off your package to Canada Post without any brokerage fees. For bigger ticket items, there's a $9 handling fee, but for smaller things like shirts, I have never, ever had extra fees attached. So I say this to everyone out there buying from the States, make sure the seller ships USPS and save yourself a small fortune. Always pay for the insurance. If you're selling, pay the extra fee for shipping insurance and hang on to your receipts. I sold a snare drum last year on Reverb and shipped it down to the US. Their transaction went smoothly, except the snare drum never arrived. So I contacted Canada Post to get things rolling. They had the buyer contact the local post office and no luck. They had the buyer contact higher up the chain. No luck. Then they want a copy of the receipt, even though the tracking number had the transaction attached to it, because they'll use any excuse to weasel out of their commitment. That and the snare was worth several hundred dollars. What's interesting is once I sent them a photo of their receipt showing exactly what the item was insured for, the snare drum magically appeared and was delivered. Take a picture of your shipping receipt on your cell phone as soon as you get it. That way you've got a record and can produce it on demand without digging for it and you will never misplace it. Always pay for signature required. This might cost an extra buck or two if you're selling it, but it will save your ass. This ensures someone is present at the delivery site and there's a record of who accepted the package. If you don't get that option, an item can be delivered, but the buyer can claim, I didn't get it, and guess who's on the hook for the cost of the item? You are. Because there's no proof if anyone actually got it. It's an easy thing to overlook, but paying for the signature option guarantees you won't get screwed over when selling your item. And if the shipping company forgets to get the signature, they're on the hook, not you. All right, that's it for this episode. Hopefully you'll find some of the information presented here to be helpful in one way or another. Remember, stick to legitimate sites like Reverb, Amazon, and eBay when buying used gear. And always keep in mind that scumbags are hard at work thinking up new ways to fuck you over. Be cautious and always get the insurance. Take it easy.